Hiya meddlers and welcome to the fifth episode of me making a game in Blender. Okay, in today's tutorial I'm going to add some more excitement if there isn't enough already. What we're going to have is we're going to better fire with the, out the cube. So you hit the, um, I'm hitting, the, I've assigned it to the E key at the moment, so when you jump you can fire. If you want, you're saying to yourself, do I need to fire anything at this point? And I'm saying, yes you do. So what we're going to do is we're going to click view camera so we can see it's in proper motion. Let's get rid of this panel here, let's get it in our way, right. If you game, let's have a look. So, the idea is, is when you um, get over the barrier, you can fire at it to get it out of the way. So it resets the barrier, and that's what I want to do today. That's the aim of today's tutorial. And you're wondering why you want me to um, reset the barrier after going over it. Well, when we get to the end of this level, the idea is I want the player to be able to travel back to the beginning. So to do that, they've got to reset the barriers. Otherwise, they're just going to collide into them. So they're going to have to fire a projectile out just by hitting the E key, just like that. So don't worry about how the game is going to end at the moment, the level's going to end. We're just going to concentrate on putting this um, firing mechanism in. So I'm going to go through that right now. To fire out anything from the cube, so that's why I want it to happen. So when you hit the key on the keyboard, the E key for instance, I want a projectile to come out of this area here. So what I'm going to do is um, before you can place anything down we're going to move the cursor so with the right mouse click on the player cube we're going to hit con uh, shift then S and we do cursor to selected I think so there's that dotted cursor okay then we look where the cursor is 3D cursor here it is on here and it's on the Y axis so we're going to go minus let's do minus 10 and you'll see where it appears then so, see it appears just in front of the um, the curse, in, in front of the player there. That's because that's where we want to fire from, the uh, projectile. So, we put, we, nothing will come out there at the moment, so we've got to add something now. So, it, what we're going to do is, wherever you add object to that uh, curse, wherever you add the object, where the cursor is, that's where it'll be placed. So, what we're going to do is go add, uh, we're going to do empty, and just make it a sphere for now. We'll do that, okay. Then we're going to go into the second layer now, and we're going to put in the projectile itself that's going to be fired out. So we're going to do add, uh, then we're going to do, oh by the way, I'll probably do that a bit quick. The second layer is here, and these grids here, down here, there's 10 layers, or loads of layers. I'm not sure there's more actually here, yeah, but I'll do it on the second one there. I just do add and projectile. You could be fancy and model your own. But I'm just going to do a simple sphere again, and uh, where is it? UV sphere, that's it. That's massively too big, so I'm just going to resize it. That'll do. And you could put a material on it. We just put a quick material. We could just emit it to so do 50. Should put a colour in there. Let's change it to a certain colour as well. Just make it a nice, brightish sort of colour. That'll do. That's nice and bright, isn't it? So, what we do now is we go back to layer 1. And the thing we have to do now, I think we have to parent the object together. Um, okay, right, before we do that, let's go back to this projectile. To save any confusion, we're going to name this projectile a uh, bullet. So, put in there, which is sphere, B U L L E T. It doesn't matter about capital, it doesn't matter about capitalization or anything like that. Hit the enter. Okay, so we do that. Then we can add some stuff, fun stuff. So we're gonna have it's always gonna be travelling once it's fired until it hits something. So we're gonna just do always to zoom in. Gonna add always and controller and we're gonna add motion. So it's just gonna be travelling in the way you want it to be fired. So we go in motion and look at the axis, we want to do it to wire axis, I think it'll be minus. So I'll just do minus 0 0.20 or something. 0 0.20 doesn't look the right or it goes in the wrong direction, it doesn't matter, we can change it later. Right, we're going to go back to, and that's all set up, go back to layer 1, where the main game is. We're going to right mouse click on this empty that we've put in front of this player. Then we're going to add a keyboard function. We're going to say when we press the E key, it's going to fire that projectile. So what we do is we do an AND, and we do a object which is edit is it object I can't remember is it edit visibility state I can never remember property motion message game edit object there we go 
and we're going to do an add that was already selected here I'm with it and then we just select the um, bullet that we named earlier so I put that into the scene and we should have some action so if we save this it should happen let's go game start if I press the E now it should there it is now you're wondering why that isn't travelling with the cube it's because you've got to attach it to the cube because I haven't done that yet so what you do, as this is already highlighted this, uh, what do you call it oh, we might as well name this something, instead of empty we'll call this spawner it's spawning the object into the game, that's why I call it spawner that'll do uh, we're going to, right, right, that's already selected so we're going to hit shift and then right mouse click on the cube I'll do control P and that should parent it together uh, it might work this, it might not, let's have a look yeah that's worked, ok do save now when the game starts you should be able to run and shoot uh, game starts and he's running and he's shooting, look at that, isn't that brilliant now let's go to our normal view and then you can see it how it's supposed to be played the proper way game start and he's shooting and he's jumping yes look at that skill right now what we want to do it doesn't make sense why I'm doing these mechanics at the moment but it will do you see the next videos when we need these mechanics put in we're going to have it shooting a barrier so when it hits the barrier then the barrier is going to disappear totally so what we do is this okay we're going to go to the um, second layer here and we're going to go to this uh, bullet and we're going to give this a, it's got a material already but I didn't give it a proper name so what I'm going to do is I'm going to call that bullet M and you'll see why in a minute so I click enter bullet M up here on this right panel get rid of that again go back to the um, first panel uh, sorry the first layer here the game so the, well, now you'll see the reason why I'm doing it so we're going to hit I'm going to say when the projectile that bullet comes out of this cube when that bullet hits the barrier it's going to end it's going to get rid of this barrier to make the barrier disappear so what we need is to have a collision detection with this barrier and the bullet so we'll go into this and we'll click a collision and uh, we're going to do it with material property because when it collides with the material of the bullet that's why I renamed that, that material bullet M earlier so we do that, we'll click an AND controller in here and it should work, hopefully it will and we'll just do a simple end object so saying simple I can never find these in here for some reason edit object and it'll be end uh, end object like that so we we'll we do that with the rest of them so I'll just go through to this barrier here just do the old uh, see I'm forgetting what I'm doing here collision with bullet M uh, select material property bullet M and I'll just do it with these two barriers, I won't do it with everything because uh, you've seen how I've done it and we just go to um, edit object and it goes to not add, it'll be end there we go, save that and it should disappear when you fire at that barrier on the way back later let's have a go, E so space and then E key didn't disappear did it? now why isn't that disappearing? I'm being really stupid here, I just realised what I'm doing. You've got to think of how things interact with the environment. So I go back to, the back, I go back to that bullet, get my words out, get back to this bullet here on the second layer. Right mouse click, you've got to think how it reacts, so you've got to put the physics into this. So we're going to say it's an actor, and then we'll just put in dynamic. And now that should work. So we go files, do the usual sh shenanigans. OK, let's have a look, view camera, and we'll whack this down, right, let's give it a go. Now it should make the barrier disappear. Yes it does, look at that, fantastic. So go boink, and whoops, let's try and get over these two barriers first. Oh for goodness sake, I'm trying to prove a point in this, there we go, yes, that's what we want. Thank you. Now, how long did that take? Okay, achieved. Okay, I'm going to give you a quick look at this in like better angles. This game of how far we've come with this. You see, I've 
Mesh, I've put each icosphere at different levels. Well, one to the left. This one's at the centre because I want the players really to pick it up. But I don't know if I want to or not. I might be evil and put that to the left. Because I'm going to give them the option. If they want to keep playing this well, they're going to have to keep uh, restarting the game. So the first one, they're going to have to move the square to the left by pressing the um, A button. So I move the square, to this square, to the left to to get the first pick up. If they pick that up, it's going to set these two yellow barriers off. So they're going to have to jump over these two barriers. Then if they want to get the next pick up, they're going to have to turn right. So pressing the D button, so they can move their square what right to get that one. They have to jump, jumping of course. And then the one above, the, but doing that, clicking that, me clicking on that one now. They get that pick up. Then it's going to um, deactivate the trap door. So they're going to have to jump over this pit, but they're going to have to move left again to get this pick up, which is going to activate this barrier. So it's going to cause a lot of ha hassle than picking up all these pickups. But at the end, they're going to get a bigger score, and that's the, that's the goal of the game. Well, now next episode, the thing we're going to do is I'm going to have like on the end here, I'm going to build another platform, and I'm going to have a character that if they've picked up at least one uh, pickup, it's going to release a character, and the character is just going to quickly travel all the way back to the start. So if you haven't cleared all these obstacles, it's just going to crash into the barriers and then it's just going to die and it'll be game over for you, regardless of how many pickups you've actually uh, picked up. So it's your goal to get rid of them. And that is the reason why in this episode I had the shooting, uh, you're, you're shooting your square about because you want to get rid of these barriers. So then that character can't crash into the barriers when it's coming back to the beginning of the level. So next level, I'm going to have a little character running back and your option is to save that character from dying. And also we're going to have a button you're going to have to activate to get this uh, trap door back into its square once you've um, deactivated it. So that is a bit of a challenge. There's quite a few things to sort out. So I'm just going to quickly go over these uh, quickly, what we've done so far. Not too much detail though. So in the play we've got properties here. One for direction to tell the cube what direction it's going in so it goes automatically. You've got a pick up which uh, puts a score in. Every time you pick up a pick up it puts a number one into there. We've got a score and that's the multiplier. So every time you pick up a, a pick up it puts adds a one to the multiplier so it would be one times table, two times table, three times table etc. And then the total of all that added together goes in the grand total score there. So I've got so I've just got, I've just got G total. Uh, that's I won't go too much more on the, on the player for now because we won't for any other videos. So if you if you pick up this pick up, it sets off these two uh, barriers. It places two barriers in the player's way, so they don't have to pick that up. They don't. They just the player can go straight through those two barriers. But they like I say if they do pick up that pick up, then these two barriers will be in place, and that this. Uh, pick up will disappear when they go into it. That's what I've got here. So you add to score, it fills two barriers what I've got here, as already mentioned, and it ends this object. It's the same with the second pick up, but instead this this second pick up, this will actually end the trap door. It'll get rid of this trap door this, and open the pit up. So that that'll give the player points but that'll give another obstacle for them to jump over. And when they get this third pick up, then it's gonna put the barrier the third barrier in the player's way but they can get more points so this last pick up I'm not sure it might open up the cage of the beast or, or character that I'm going to build in the next episode so there we have it it's leading to a nice uh, finale this episode or this whole series and uh, at the end of this uh, when I've created this game the whole end of this series I'll release it for people to play about with themselves and see if they can improve it or just have fun with it I'll, really that's the idea of it so um, thank you for watching Meddlers and I'll see you later. Nice